world is littered with the decaying bodies of forgotten muscle cars. At Graveyard Cars, a restoration shop in Springfield, Oregon, no car is too far gone or past its expiration date to get a new lease on life. Leading the group of Mopar morticians is Mark Warman. My name is Mark Warman. I am the owner of Graveyard Cars. Our job is to take a 45, 50-year-old car, restore it correctly, and have it look the way it did in its former days of glory. At Graveyard Cars, you won't find many mods or aftermarket parts, but what you will see is a team of hardworking technicians dead set on restoring these cars back to their factory specifications. I'm Will Scott. I'm the painter here at Graveyard Cars. I do all the paint work, the cutting and buffing, slight assembly, kind of a little bit of everything, but mainly just stuff in the body and paint shop. My name's David Ray. Uh, I'm an assembly technician here at Graveyard Cars. Well, I'm Melissa Rose, and I'm the lead historian for Graveyard Cars. Hi, my name's Royal Yoakum. Hey, my name is Royal Yoakum, and I show up here at Graveyard Cars just to take my verbal abuse. No, seriously. The restorations I've been helping Mark with since we were kids, really. I've been with the show since the beginning, mainly just as a whipping post. To restore one of these cars, Mark and his team decode its vehicle identification number and build sheet. We bring them here, we bring them back to life. We completely disassemble them, strip the paint, redo any, replace any rusted out panels. We're a Mopar restoration shop specializing in OE replication. I'm bringing the deadest Mopar muscle cars on the planet back to life again. To do this, they use original equipment reproduction parts to replicate its exact appearance the day it rolled out of the factory. The most powerful cars can't live forever, but a limited number of Mopar muscle cars will get a second chance at life. All we have is super cool cars. One of the cars that isn't gonna be the first four to go out, but is shortly after it, is our 1969 Roadrunner convertible 426 Hemi automatic, the only one, and Q5 Seafoam Turquoise. On this episode, the Graveyard Ghouls can install the dash to our 1967 Hemi GTX convertible, the interior to Bill Goldberg's 1968 GTX convertible, complete and install the drivetrain to our 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible, and paint the car that started the show, one of 108 ever made, our 1971 Phantom Cuda. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. With deadlines already pushed back six months, the pressure is on from the team to make sure customers' cars get finished without compromise. Sneaking ahead of the line, a 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible is ready for assembly. With parts awaiting to be installed, Dave Ray preps to install its air grabber. The 69 Roadrunner convertible, I believe it's one of one, Q5 Seafoam Turquoise, beautiful car, 426 Hemi automatic. Uh, that one there's uh, going really well. I'm just waiting for uh, suspension and drivetrain. I got all my firewall built out, uh, so I'm basically uh, waiting on Mark at this point, but uh, it's moving along nicely. All the parts are detailed and ready to go together. Recently, painter Will Scott applied the final paint to our 1969 Roadrunner convertible. Q5 Seafoam Turquoise is very similar to teal, and it's one of the rarest and arguably the most beautiful color to come from Chrysler. As much as this color is beautiful, it's equally difficult to spray. Reducer, air pressure, airflow, and pattern angle must be precise. Big D? Yo, you see, you hey see, boss. You see Mickey Doodles anywhere? Uh, yeah, he's running around. Uh, you got a minute? I can uh, kind of go Not over. Not if it's anything to do with an air grabber, I don't. Yeah, this air grabber set up for you. Oh, God. Uh, this is the one out of that 69 Roadrunner. And uh, run into some issues. Okay. But I can see there's some spots where it was repaired. 
So that's gonna show. Yeah, that's gonna be right in your face, right in the front, and so is this little area here. You can see where it's been replaced. This is Working with Dave has been great ever since he started. He's a very responsible person. Every minute I've worked with Dave has been a blessing. If he has any questions, he comes to me. But together, collectively, we're able to put these cars together and make them perfect. Okay. I mean, that's the one it started life with, and yep. And I believe it should go back on the car even if we have to make some compromises. So we have this brake out here that's gonna need color on it. Mark's cool, you know, uh, he, he's, he's a crack up. I mean, he's, he's fun to be around. He's always, you know, joking around and always playing around and doing the shadow boxing and dancing. The guy is genuinely uh, a great guy. He's got a great heart. I mean, unbelievable the amount of knowledge that uh, Mark Warman knows. I really enjoy working there. Yeah, and I'm and just these not... these were all rusted really bad, and I went through and kind of scuffed them getting them back, but some of them were painted black, so... I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab Will and just show him while you're still there. Okay. William Santiago! Oh, hey, real quick, I want to go over and show you this air box. Okay. Hey, is it lead cancer-causing when you sand it? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't even waste any time scuffing until I tell you exactly what it is. You told me to sand the lead, though. Yeah, yeah, you want to sand the lead, yeah. But then Ryan told me it causes cancer when you sand it. It can cause cancer. Okay, it's like mesothelioma or something. Um, working with Marks, it hasn't been hard. Um, some people it's harder than others, but I, I personally don't have a problem working side by side with them. Oh yeah, I, I tell you, you should wear a respirator. Well, I've already sanded it. Will's a crack up to work with. I do like to flick him crap, and he does like to flick it back to me. Um, he's just not as quick as I am. Well, that's a little <coughs> scuff, that's not really. <coughs> No, I, I mean, it... <laughs> Okay, Mr. Dave pulled me over here. Now, I don't want to paint everything because we're going to lose some of its origin, uh, its authenticity. If you look really careful, you'll see there's white little strands. Fiberglass? It's the fiberglass strands, right? So if we just blast the whole thing to color, I have no doubt you can get the right color with my help. I don't know, I can get the right color, but yeah. So I'm basically just going to go from here over Spot in the color. Where, where are you wanting to shoot the whole because shot? Because I'm going to do this whole thing. No. Yes, with clear. Yes. With clear, yeah. yes. I. Yeah, but you're not are, saying clear. You're, yes. You're, yes, I, I just said I'm going to spot in my color here, and then I'm going to clear the whole thing. Spot, spot color here. Yeah, I'm going to spot color here. You just get here, that thing going. There's clear, color has to go through here. Remember how you hated the ridge in the middle of the Challenger hood? Here's what Mark's going to do. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to make the color up. It's going to be almost 100% perfect. Because he did his little thing, he's gonna come out there and say, well, hey, it's not quite perfect. He'll put like a couple drops of something in it and say, now it's perfect. You're, so he, you're still the boss. So I have I have no no experience to draw from. I'm just a, a no, check because, signer. Yeah, th thank you. I think it's kind of cute that Will calling me out like that. Like, I mean, I'm just a check signer. You know, I, I was doing this when he was still crapping his pants. I was doing this before he was crapping it. Well, actually, I walked by him the other day and I swear he did crap his pants oh, anyway, so I'm not sure that's it. Let's just say before he was born, I was doing this stuff. Nice earrings. Thank you. You ever thought about wearing earrings, Dave? No. Never no, thought about not. it myself. No, I'll no. be dipped in excrement. That's weird. I never thought about it either. With the air grabber handed off to Will, he can now begin scratch building the color to match the original fiberglass finish. Mark wants to keep as much of the originality as possible, so Will is going to have to put his color tinting skills to the test. All right, so here's what I have. This is a 1683 is our black. We got our 1684, which is our white. We got a 1609, which is a violet. And then the 1634, which is a brown. We've been using PPG for years, so you kind of know ahead of time what it takes to get the color exact. So I'll kind of put these in there, I'll stir it up, check it out, compare it, and then just kind of keep tinting it as I go. And then once the color's ready to go, I can just head in there and start spraying. Mixing the paint from scratch, it's a little more difficult because you can't just type it in your computer and come up with the color that you're looking for. You actually just kind of wing it a little bit, add colors in, so it's a little harder to do. It's a solid color, it's a very common color, so with this particular mix that we're doing, it's not gonna be as difficult. Tinted to what he feels is right, it's time to compare it with the original. Meanwhile, Dave found out whether the rivets were a natural steel or black finish. I got with Dave, all these bolts actually stay a natural finish. Dave went out in the graveyard there. I guess we have two cars out there that have these on there, so he was able to, able to look at them, and then the bolts out there were rusted. So that tells you that they weren't painted at all. So what I'll do is I'll end up spraying my color on, and it'll get, I'll get overspray on them, but I'll come back with lacquer thinner on a rag, kind of wipe them clean, 
and then end up clearing the whole thing, which will also prevent these from rusting in the future. So we're basically doing exactly what factory did, only it's a little bit better because I'm gonna clear coat this whole thing, which will preserve it forever. So if you can get your color, you know, pretty, pretty close, you know, which I did there. So that's a pretty good match. That's actually really good. That's 30 times better than Mark could have ever dreamed of doing. So we got this whole thing laid out, ready to go. I'm gonna go in, put my paint, my gun, um, dust some color around the areas that need it, and then clear coat the whole thing with a semi-flat clear. All right, so my color's all done. Spotted in where I was supposed to. I did a little bit extra just to clean it up just a little bit. This looks great. I am gonna go in there right now, get some clear coat, which is gonna die back. It's a flex and flat clear, so it's for purposes like this. I'll clear coat the whole entire thing and give it back to Dave. It's gonna look brand new. It absolutely looks 100% factor. The clear is right now, we'll go in there and check it out, but it's starting to die back. So it'll have that nice low gloss sheen that it's supposed to have. So as soon as this is actually all dried up, I'm gonna get it over there to Dave and Mark is gonna love it. He won't, he'll tell you he won't like it, but he's gonna be pretty happy with it. I don't give crappy jobs. Yeah, when a good man comes to me and says, thank you, Mark, for your continued help and support in the work-related arena, and I wanna move on, I wanna better myself. You know, you say to me, I, I, wanna, I wanna move past that. Then I can make that dream come true too, AKA for you. Yeah, point is, you haven't passed your PPG certification test yet, right? I passed that 15 years ago. The guy ago. in the shop who gives the test is a friend of mine. Mickey, you turd stain. The ice man. Have you ran the ad yet for the painter? Good, don't bother, all right? I got the guy for the job, he's perfect. He's in my office right now. Yeah, he's passed the PPG certification test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's first aid trained. And we can have a CV printed up this afternoon? Good, yeah. I'm seeing you Sunday, aren't I? For my sins? Has Elaine left you yet? Huh. Yep. She has left him. Forgot about that. So Mark's here seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. When he's not here, he's at home watching his new movies or watching new box sets. So right now, he's acting like Michael Scott from The Office. David Brent, Sir David Brent from The Office. BBC, the funny version. When they got all the laughs to start it all, so. What? No, nothing. In 1967, Plymouth shook the world up with the gentleman's muscle car, the Plymouth GTX. They built 733 of them with the optional 426 Hemi. Of that low demographic, only 312 had four-speed transmissions. Of the four-speed transmissions in the 426 Hemi, only a handful escaped the factory with a convertible top. With the installation of the freshly restored dash from Instrument Specialties, we are one step closer to putting this car back on the road. Um, I like the fact that that car's gonna be driven every day. So as far as the interior goes, we just put it back in. The car came here for strictly body and paint. So he's, this, you're gonna see this car every day on the road. He's gonna be driving through Vegas. I love this car. All right, got our All dashboard right. back from our buddies. Let's yeah. see what's back here. I get that. See that. They do yeah, a good job. They do Joker. a beautiful job. You Let's got do it. it. Yeah. Oh, they do beautiful work. Look at that. 
This is the little button right here that you have to push down if you want to pull the headlight switch completely out so you can take the bezel off. So just remember that if you're ever doing your own car. It's way on the top. It's way past the average human. Of course, I got little arms. I got short little arms. Yeah, but you got to figure too, you're jammed in between the seat. Steering column coming right down here. Laying on your back the here. floorboard, feet yep. going over the top of the headrest. Colon's yeah. oozing stuff <laughs> yeah. out of it from your 50-year-old prostate exam. Anyway, have you got side bolts in place yet? Yeah, side bolts are in place. Okay, and this will go up here. I'll let you get a little. I'm going to try getting here for you. Yeah, there it goes. Beautiful. There you go. That looks great. Good job. Oh, look at that. The hole's lined up perfectly. Yeah. Look at that. That's something. Yeah, that's. That oh, my, my. Good. Oh, hell yes. I got to put on my potty oh, dress. Yeah. Looks great. Let's plug it in, baby. Oh, God. That looks right. awesome, don't it? Yeah. It's beautiful. I love it. The dash went in like butter. Right now, Dave is installing all the rest of the wiring. He's plugging the plug and plays together where they're supposed to go, chasing them down, putting everything where it needs to be. Here's our goal, all right? Once he gets that dash done and everything wired in place, we're gonna be able to put a battery in it and then we can do a systems check. Convertibles are usually a little more tricky because you got the top motor and some extra electronics and extra you know, wiring and stuff going to the rear of the car. We have legendary interiors coming out here right away to put the convertible top on it. And so they need that top to be fully functional. Of all the systems that have to work when they get here, that convertible top has to. And it's all been rebuilt, it's all been detailed. So it's a, a multitude of things can go wrong. But if that goes right, they're here, put the top on it, we bolt the interior in it, I call Mr. Torino up, and I make his day and say, your GTX is done, sir. I'm not anticipating any problems, but uh, you never know. You won't know until you get going on. After the convertible top's on, we bolt the interior in it, and this thing's down the road. Hey. There you go. I got the parts uh, marked out oh, for you. Oh, good. 71 Cuda step, that's what I'm working on. Um, my dad is great as a dad. He is driven, motivated. Yeah. Check what do you want me to do for the rest of the day? I don't have much going on. Good news for you. Got a guy bringing over a car, wants to sell it to me. Mm -hmm. Borrow my tow truck. We'll right. be here in about 10 minutes. Okay. As a boss, my dad is a little crazy. Stanley Delwyn Lynch. <laughs> Working with Alyssa has been a lot of fun. Obviously, there's the moment where she uh, stole the car at gunpoint. Where's Alyssa? My darling daughter. I'm seriously so excited. She's out. That's what she's doing. We've seen, we've seen her pull out. Working with Alyssa has its moments because she's used to all my shticks. Uh, get your notepad, get your camera, uh, get a pen. But I also know all of her weak points. So if I want to get to her, I'll just tell her that I think I saw a zit, you know, and that's it for her. She's in the bathroom working on a zit for the next hour and a half. You're not gonna leave me alone. I'm not gonna leave you alone. Right? With <laughs> like we're doing this together, Lynch. all three of us. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I don't like the way you said that, Dad. Seriously, no, don't I'm not do gonna that leave you. I, I to won't. Me. I won't. God, this is. I'm so here to help I you in any way I can. Oh, 66 Charger. How you doing, Stan? Beautiful. It's always nice to see you. Hey, Stan. You hey. sure you didn't just steal this? Nope. Well, I got a good purchase. It's awful low in the front, so you either got it sucked down or it's got an engine in it. Um, it's a lot of tension. Did you even open the hood? It's got an engine in it. I didn't say it didn't have an engine. Well, I just asked you if it had an I engine. I said it's got a lot of tension. So actually, he brought in a pretty decent car, which is surprising for Stan. I figured it'd be some rolled over, kicked in, burned out 61 Impala or something. You've seen my private investigation license? I haven't. No. Oh yeah, we go out, and go out and stake out, hang out in the car, <laughs> yeah. take pictures of people. Oh my Stay. gosh, when was this picture taken? Uh, <laughs> a while ago. Yeah, yeah. There's a PI badge. So you're not a police officer, though? No, no, no. You go to school. Oh. Mine's so old, though, I didn't have to go to school. It's an automatic transmission car, pretty straight body. So if we do need parts, we've got a 66 semi charger we're working on now that's a 426 semi four speed car. What are we talking? How much? A couple hundred. But I don't that's understand. That's a good it. deal. He couple inherited hundred dollars. You're out of your mind. He inherited it for free. 200 is not a bad deal, but you got it for free. I got my time. I got wear and tear on the equipment going out and getting it. It's my truck. 
50 bucks. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. You know what I get for scrap metal? That's probably worth more than 50 bucks, scrap metal. 100 bucks, that's the top offer. If you throw in a haircut, Alyssa? My dad's gonna do your haircut? Done. Wait, what? Done. Yeah. I'm gonna do your haircut? I think paying 100 bucks is a good buy. He would have gave it to me. That's the whole thing. I know he bucks. wants some brewski money. 100 bucks and a haircut. Yeah, you like cutting his hair though, right? What is that? My lunch. What? It's lunch. Haven't you ever cooked a potato on the motor? That's gonna probably be the last time I go out and do a walk around with my dad when he buys a car, because I'm not gonna get roped in to free haircuts or awkward encounters I anymore. I don't think he's into roping. Oh my God. Didn't look like it cooked it very well. Yeah, I learned. It was I don't know what educational. Anyway, enjoy cutting his hair. I've got a shop to run, as you were. Flizzum, flazum. Does anybody feel bad flizzu. for me? Flizzu. Anyone? <laughs> oh my God. While the GTX was known as the gentleman's muscle car, not in this case. 1968 GTX, 444 speed convertible. This is one of only 375 built. This car has manual steering and manual drum brakes. Fortunately, it's owned by former world wrestling champion Bill Goldberg. And trust me, it takes a Bill Goldberg to drive a car like that. With the repairs finished on Bill Goldberg's GTX, Dave and Alyssa are going to install the seats and center console. Uh, what I pretty much did, I got all the carpet in. It's all cut, all cut around the console. Uh, the top of the rear seat is in and everything's prepped and ready to go uh, for the door panels and uh, the rest of the seats. I'm excited, I got Alyssa helping me with this one, so this is gonna be cool. What okay. I'm gonna have you do is start with this here. I'm really excited to get to work on Bill Goldberg's GTX. It's one of my favorite cars in the shop. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Yeah. Wind up there, so everything looks pretty good. So now we can pop this in, like that. Ooh. So once that goes in, everything else looks will so kind of pretty. fall too. Not too bad, yeah. huh? Now it's just a matter of tightening the screws to keep the panels in place. This reminds me of putting model cars together with my dad. Oh, that's cool. You'd think it'd be less intense, like putting a, a little model car together with him, but... It's not, yeah. huh? I think we did a couple together, and then um, he decided he wasn't gonna show me anything in the shop. Oh, right. <laughs> the model cars, yeah. He it said, was like the intro. Oh, gotcha. Intro. So he's like, nah, you're not doing that. Yeah, well, <laughs> stressful enough. I think you're doing just fine. With the window cranks and glass installed, it's time to install the rear passenger seat. See, it goes in yeah. and then it catches. Let's see where yours is. Oh, you got yours. Did I? Yeah, Yay. yours is in. Score it first in. try, awesome. All right, that's it. Basically. With the rear passenger seat installed, Dave and Alyssa can install the center console. How does it look there? Pretty decent? Yeah, it looks good. Nice. Now that the seats are bolted to the body, the interior of Bill Goldberg's GTX convertible is complete. I think it went great. It went awesome. It's so tempting not awesome. to just put it into first gear and head yeah. out, but you know yeah, what just... happened the last time I did that, so I'd like my privileges back, so I'll be good. Yeah, you wanna start it up? Can we start it? Yeah, just make sure it's in yeah. neutral. <laughs> With the interior finished, this GTX is nearly ready to be shipped back to its owner. The 1971 Plymouth Cuda is the most collectible muscle car on the planet today. This is an example of rarity. One of only 108 440 six barrel four speed cars built with additional optional EV2 Tour Red paint and a shaker hood. When this car receives its final paint, it is going to become the most classic and talked about 71 Cuda on the... What are you doing? I was gonna roll this in the booth. This is a power shot. This a is what I what? do to... 
Have you never watched any movie? Have you ever seen Robert De Niro? Are you talking to me? Lieutenant Weinberg, I have a greater He's responsibility than He's you can it. possibly fathom. We did this you last season. You leave Santiago and, and you curse the Marines. We need something new. We no use movies. words like honor. Um, What's Colonel Jessup going to do if he gets interrupted to give you the final summation? Just saying, if you're giving your final summation, Pacino comes down and says, say goodbye to Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Scarface. I was wondering if you could help me out in the kitchen. I got some questions. You don't do that. You let him say it. Say good night, little bad guy. We're back to that again. He's going back to just sign his name to checks. Uh, I'm going to continue working on That's going to kill somebody. Maybe like a year ago, he was a little more in tune. Now it's just all. Say good night, little bad guy. That's how he approves cars now. And I guess that'll have to do. And I'll go ahead and get this thing painted. <sighs> The air grabber for our 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible has finished curing. Dave and Alyssa have been assigned to get it installed. We got the air grabber back from Will for our 69 Roadrunner convertible, that Q5 beautiful seafoam turquoise paint, one of one car. Alyssa's gonna help me put it in. So it's all new to me, I haven't done one yet. Meanwhile, Mark and Mike are building out the massive 426 that belongs inside of the 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible. The goal is to get the entire suspension installed. Why don't we start with just getting the carburetors on if you want to put the rear one on. We just got these back from uh, Scott Smith at Harms. Beautiful, beautiful work he does. The original casting plate, plating of the casting is right. He does a phenomenal job, so uh, we've entrusted him with all of our carburetors. Now we're talking about numbers. This carburetor has an F like Foxtrot, an eight, and then it has 4619S. Those actually mean something. It means that they don't just go on there, any carburetor would run on there, but the right one. So the F represents the month that this carburetor was cast, starting in January with A. So this is June of 1968. The car was actually built April of 1969. So as long as these carburetors precede the build date of the car, then these would be right for the car. The number itself, the 4619, is the correct ABS four barrel carburetor for the front. And so if you look at that one, it's got the same thing except with the 4621 behind it. The 4621 means it's the rear carburetor for an automatic. It would be different if this was a four speed car. So that's how detailed some of these casting numbers and part numbers can be with their date codes. We do not have the correct date coded fuel pump for this engine. The owner knows that. The owner is fine with it. He's got several Hemi cars. This was an extra one he had. This is a 1966. And how I can tell it's a 1966 is if you turn it over, you go to the base. This is the base of it. You'll see A6. That's a date code. The A represents January. A always starts with January and then it goes February, so B, March would be C, uh, April would be D, and on. The six is 1966, so this fuel pump, while it's been freshly restored and is beautiful, it just started life on a 1966 model 426 Emmy. And have you checked to see if the relay rod's in there yet? The relay rod is not in there yet. Okay. This is what we refer to as a setback. <laughs> The air grabber for our 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible has finished curing. Dave and Alyssa are going to install the air grabber. Basically, here's our unit. It's in actually four different pieces. You got your gasket here. Okay. That goes on. And then you got one side of the air box, the center section, and the outside of the air box. According to Alyssa, she has bedazzler experience. I do. In middle school, I bedazzled. My mom went through like the bedazzling stage, and I did that with all my jeans, and it looks like a similar tool. So, yep. same idea. I think we'll be okay. So, if all else fails, we're going to bedazzle <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Kind of center this. You can kind of see. I want to make sure all our holes line up. Okay. So, open your tool up first, and that rivet should go all the way down. There, there you go. go. Leave it open. And then once it's a little it, bit bigger than the one I used I in know. my here. And then you want to push that all the way flush. Okay. There you go. And then see if you can squeeze that thing together. Is it working at all? There this, we go. That feels like. Does that feel yep, better? Yep. Yeah, you're doing good. Almost got it. Perfect. Woo! Okay. Nice. Boy, that was a total pain in the ass, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa and Dave add the final pieces to the air grabber and rivet them into place. My arms are sore from holding up that riveter. 
Mine too, yeah. Yeah, the bedazzler uh, was not very bedazzler. bedazzling. <laughs> yeah, that riveter was, uh, was a workout. Yeah, yeah, I'm done for. My upper body is just hammered. And Alyssa was running the drill and the riveter, so she did a great job. I think um, it went really well. Yep. Well, I can't wait to see when the car is done, actually, see the cool. wire. We, we got through it, and as you can see, it looks awesome. It's, it's, and so it was new to both of us, and we knocked it out and did a great job. And yeah, we're ready for go. the next one. With the air grabber installed, it's up to Mark and Mike to finish building the suspension to the 1969 Hemi Roadrunner convertible. Let's rock this thing out. Really didn't hit any roadblocks while we are putting the rest of the pieces on the Hemi. Everything that's crucial to that drivetrain going in the car is ready to go in the car. We're ready to move this around to the other side and marry them together. With the air grabber painted and installed, Mark and the Ghouls can now install the 1969 Roadrunner Convertible's massive 426 Hemi engine. Okay, let's put the rear end in first to counterbalance it. Nothing like putting an 800 pound <laughs> yeah. valve. That's probably more like 11 or 1200. Oh yeah. You're talking about a Q5 Seafoam Turquoise 69 Hemi Roadrunner Convertible. I mean, they only made seven Hemi Roadrunner Convertibles and it's the only one in Q5. I got grease Shocks here are in all place. These bad boys. That's good. Yep, should go right in the spot right there. Grab your side roll. For as big and clumsy as these cars are, there are certain components on them that just have to be dead on, straight, accurate for them to go on, and that's one of them. So it's none of that horseshoe bull crap. You gotta be right on the money. Yeah. So you have the front, both sides, leaf spring hangers, shackle hangers, and shocks are tight? Yep, yep. all yep. the front, front okay. perches are tight. Let's get that front end stuck together. <laughs> Let's stuff that big mother bear hemi in there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, come on, hernia. Oh, yeah. Let's <laughs> go slow. Whew. I'll kind of guide you in. Big old heavy joker. When it comes to the installation of a 426 Hemi in anything, the problem always is size, size, size. You're trying to stick this great, big, huge elephant engine in a regular size normal car. With as many hands as we have on deck, we shouldn't have any troubles. What you want to do is get the engine installed without beating the hell out of everything around it. Keep coming. I think it's sank. We're good right there for a starter. What do you think, boss? Okay, that looks really good there. Somebody say when. I've watched Mark go, you know, from doing his own cars to um, restoring customers' cars. I've been with the show since the beginning, mainly just as a whipping post. I think that I'm blessed to be able to work with a great group of guys that I do get to work with. I mean, my daughter, Will, Dave, those guys, but Royal, he's my friend. We really have most of our formidable years working on cars as a team together. Uh, I can do a, uh, a lot of tormenting before he hits his boiling point. That's a, a plus side to it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I can also call on Royal and know that he's going to be there. He's going to be there with me when nobody else will. Okay, hold on. What the f are you laughing at, Nancy? You want to come <laughs> leg squat it? You little b I can probably oh, the, the back down, you think? Well, I'm, I'm not in my strength zone. This is my strength. Now I'm my movement. Don't hold on to the cross member or the sway bar. It's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dumb son of a <laughs> I didn't let him go for a while. You could have. Oh, f you, c bone. You can come back a little more. Yeah, room temperature IQ. You're in no position to laugh at me. Room temperature. There's my yeah. buddy, Mark. Son of a There you go. Yeah. Okay, is it ready to go back now? Go up. Go up, roll. Right there. Okay, come back. All the geometry is right. I mean, it wouldn't have took a K member if the rails were too close together. The car was never wrecked before. It's a beautiful body on it. It's just, I think, with the power steering on it and all decked out, it was just a tight fit. Okay, we got the front two K member bolts in. Now we can put the transmission cross member bolts in. Once that's in, we can raise the car up and put the rear uh, K member bolts in. And we're finally buttoned up. That's the tightest fit I've seen on a Mopar yet. I think next time I'm gonna end up taking the steering gear, just leaving it off. That's the way to do it. It's just too tight, too tight. But it's the first 69 Hemi Roadrunner convertible I've done, so sorry. Sue me. Yeah. Look at that baby go together. I'm relieved to have it done. That's nice. The owner's gonna be thrilled to death. Uh, he's he's gonna be excited to see the pictures. All right, great job, everybody. Great job. Nice work.
All right. All we have left is some cotter pins we got to put in and the drive shaft exhaust, and all of a sudden the bottom of this car is going to be wrapped up. Be driving before you know it. With the drivetrain installation complete, it's time to check on the wiring for our 1967 Hemi GTX convertible. Let's kill the light. Nice. All right. Okay. All right, let's try it. Uh, park first. Uh, yeah, let's run the park. Look at that. Park we lights. got park lamps in the front. Beautiful. Go ahead and pull the headlights on the rest of the way. Give me a high beam. Okay. Who's going to drive you home tonight? Nice. That's beautiful. Let me check the back. Okay. The, the worst thing that can happen when you're doing something like this is if somebody's got the wire that goes to like the emergency brake warning light in the actual hole for let's say the high beam, then they're going to work opposite. You hit the high beams and your emergency brake light's going to come on. It's nothing. It doesn't cause a fire. It's just kind of cumbersome because you have to reach up inside and switch things around. Okay, pull them on. Nice. They're evenly balanced, by the way, which they're not always. Usually one's brighter than the other. While the taillights are on, let's hit the brakes. Okay, brakes. What more do you want? Who's the man? You the man. Left hand. Look at that. And you can check out our nice fender marker That's indicator beautiful. there. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the right-hand side. Wow. Works beautiful. Yep. You already know all that, don't you? Yeah. You're confident. You're yep. a confident man. Okay. Turn the lights on. All right. Woo, Beautiful. There we go. All right. So it comes down to this moment. How do you feel confidence-wise? Oh, I'm confident. Of course you are. You don't yeah. even worry yeah. about it, do you? It's going to work. Well, I just get worried because of all the hydraulics and yeah. stuff. But, yep, hydraulics, um, the motor. Well, I'm green light go. I say hit the top and let's see what we got. Uh -huh. All right, here we go. Going up. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Look at that. Looking good. Wow. You did like a bench bleed on it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah Look at that. Yeah. And it takes a few cycles to get her kind of broke in, but she's working good. Look at that. That's all I'm saying. You have just made it into the handful of guys in the world. Wow. Beautiful. It's a nice car. Fantastic work. That's graveyard card, baby. Yep. So one of the cool things that we're doing at Graveyard Cars this year is trying to speed up the assembly process. So what we're building now are frame jigs. This is a unit that will have a series of perches on it. It's a big flat bench. Have a series of perches on it for the, uh, what's he painting? Painting the Cuda? Painting the Cuda? No, I haven't signed off on the, hey. Mark signed off on this a while ago. We walked around the whole car, looked at everything, um, gave me a thumbs up, said it was good to go. No, I didn't. You most certainly didn't when we were out there looking at it. No, I was starting to sign off on it, and then you started in, and I was trying to show you that I was doing my power intro. So all you right, and then we walked around the car. No, I didn't look at it close like this. This is, you're ready to paint, this is the big yeah, one. I am ready to get in there and get orange going. The eyes go in before the name goes on. I don't. Are you serious? Who carries around a magnifying glass? I mean, who does? <laughs> I know why he carries around a magnifying glass. I just didn't think he had it on him ready to inspect my paint job. OK, Mark, I just want to get to paint. Can I get back to painting? Thank you. blessing now to go ahead and paint it. I had your blessing two days ago. You're welcome. Mr. George? Mark. How are you, sir? Pretty good, good to see you. George McGeorge? Is that really your name? George McGeorge? Oh, yeah. The first and the last name. Yep. George McGeorge. How about a nickname? You got a nickname? No. Curious George. I just named it that. How about by Curious George? No. 
So this is our assembly shop, all right? This is where all the cars, after they've been painted, come into to get their final assembly, all right? Uh, we got our 69 Hemi Roadrunner. It's the only one in the world painted in Q5C foam turquoise. 1972 Dodge Charger, 400 Magnum 4 speed. You've got to be able to recite this stuff off. It's one of only 126 made. This has hideaway headlights. You pop those up, it's like a skirt blowing up in the middle of summer. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, is, yeah. I'm not curious. Let's go into the body and paint shop. It was weird having Mark show me around the shop, especially since I've worked here for about six months now. This is where you're gonna start. This is your world. This is your castle. This is your, your area to grow and to blossom into a beautiful flower. Maybe a big flower, but still a beautiful flower. You know what I'm saying? Will! Work with me forever, 15 years, all right? This is our mixing room, PPG mixing room. You see all of our colors in there. There's Will. Willie, how you doing? Good, what's happening? Been with us a long time, haven't you? Why, why? This is Will Scott. I uh, brought him right out of high school, taught him everything that he knows. This is George McGeorge. Got a first and a last. He's been here for a couple months. I've already, I know. Don't try to. What, uh, what we're mixing, what we're making. Everything's PPG, number one Hi. paint company in the world. I'm getting ready to shoot this orange. Have you seen the paint gun that sits in that holder right there? It's got the little skeletons on it. Uh, no, no, I have no idea. One of your problems is you are not responsible. Have you looked everywhere? Well, why is the purple out? Well, I don't. Ooh, so I'm crazy. <laughs> Used to be called statutory grape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one with the skulls on it. That's how we say it in Britain. We say schools. You're not from Britain. Oh. Seen it. A map. Yeah. What? <laughs> Oh, that, that's mental. <laughs> that's plum crazy. Why would you do this? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I guess you might say we painted him in a bit of a corner. <laughs> Is this the whole stapler in the jello thing? Only the paint version? Is it for? You know, when they put the stapler in the jello, it's funny. You put my paint or my well, gun in I have no idea paint. what you're talking about. Look at your hands. Okay, can we stop with all this? I didn't want to paint you in a corner. This is what we talked about. You need to find a new show. He's gonna get along great around here, isn't he? My curious George, always looking at the other side. No? What is the most important thing in business? Is it the building? Is it the stocks? Is it the profit? No, mm -mm. it's people. It's investment in people. My proudest moment at Graveyard Cars isn't the fact that we could bring back a 71 Cuda six barrel car from the dead and have it painted. It isn't putting a dash in two GTXs in the interior in one of the famous World Wrestling Federation champions cars. It isn't the fact that we installed a Hemi in a car. It's not even the fact that I'm leaving a legacy to my daughter that will carry on for generations to come. To me, my proudest moment, it was a young guy, fresh out of tech school, had all his new tools, first time ever in a shop, came up to me and said, Mr. Warman, would you mentor me? It didn't happen. Uh, he turned out to be a piece of shit. I had to let him go. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.